Section eighty of Up One Pair of Stairs of My Bookhouse. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Verity Kendall. Up One Pair of Stairs of My Bookhouse. Edited by Olive Bupra Miller. Old Johnny Appleseed. Once upon a time, many years ago, there lived a good old man who was known by the queer name of Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed wasn't always his name. First it was Johnny something else. But anyway, old Johnny trudged up and down and back and forth across the great wide rolling prairies of America with a green baize bag that held a little old fiddle slung over one shoulder. The houses were far apart on the prairies in those days. Indeed, most of them were nothing but rude little log cabins and Johnny used to wander from one to the other, carrying a small charcoal stove and a bit of solder, with which he would mend tea kettles, tin cups, pots and pans for the farmer's wives. When the evening came, some good wife would take him in for the night at one of the cabins along the way. After supper, he would sit on the bench by the back door and take his little old fiddle from the bag. Then all the children would gather about him, the youths and maidens too, and even the grown men and women, and he would draw the bow across the strings and fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Oh, how he would fiddle! Sometimes his music was lively and jolly, the very jig of a tune. Then the young people would dance and caper and frolic about. Sometimes it was soft, low, and sweet, as the sweetest note of a bird. Then they would sit quietly on the ground at his feet, in the soft rose glow of the sunset, and drift away into a land of perfect joy and peace. Old Johnny's music came from his heart, that's what it did, and old Johnny's heart was as big as broad, and as rich as the great wide prairies themselves. Men called him poor, and shabby, and old, but he wasn't poor, and shabby, and old, really and truly. He was young and joyous, fresh as the youngest child that sat on his knee, and rich with the treasures of love and kindness. When the morning came, old Johnny would take his green baize bag and his charcoal stove and his solder, wave his hand to the children, and start on again. Sometimes he had to hew a path for himself through the dense forest, which no settler's act had yet cleared. Sometimes he wandered over treeless plains. Sometimes he met a roving Indian, or a whole party of Indians. But the cheery wave of old Johnny's hand and the cheery ring of old Johnny's voice, and the share in any goodies old Johnny might have in his lunchbox, were always for the red men and white alike. So the red men grunted their friendliest greetings, and the white men hailed him with joy. One day Johnny stood on the top of a little hillock, and looked down over the rolling prairies. The grasses were gently waving in the breeze, like the swelling waves of the sea. Flowers, blue, green, and pink, made gay spots of colour on the green and here and there nestled a homestead in a little clump of trees. As Johnny looked at it all, he thought how good was God, and how dear to him were all those brothers of his, those children of the one father, who lived down there on the plains before him. Then he began to wish he could do something more for his fellow men than just travel from house to house, mend old pots, pans, and kettles, and play the violin. Earnestly he said in his heart, O oh God, our Father, Surely there is something good each man can do for his fellow men. Show me what I can do. As he stood there, an idea came to him. That's what I will do, he said, and that very evening he asked the good wife at whose cabin he spent the night for a couple of apples. Carefully he saved the cores with their little brown seeds. The next day as he wandered along a country lane, he dug a hole in the ground and planted some of the seeds. Then he went farther on his way and planted the rest. When he had used all the seeds he had, he stopped at a house to mend some tinware and asked for more cores. That was only the beginning of the work old Johnny Appleseed did. After that, he began to get apples and keep the seeds wherever he went. So he filled a great bag that he carried over his shoulder beside the green baize fiddle case. Everywhere beside the road, up and down, back and forth across the prairies, he sowed the little brown seeds. Old Johnny can plant them, the rains can water them, but only God can make them grow into fine, strong trees, he would say reverently. 
as he covered them over with rich black earth. Then on he would go, whistling and singing like a boy, only a little seed in the ground. But Johnny, in his mind's eye, saw all the countryside blooming with trees. He saw the branches loaded with rosy red fruit, bending down to the little boys and girls, to the youths and maids, the men and women, who should reap in days to come what he had sowed. Oh, a rich, rich fellow with so much to give was shabby old Johnny Appleseed. Year after year he wandered on, mending the old tin pots and kettles and pans, playing his violin and scattering his rich treasures over the earth. By and by, when a long time had passed, and the name of Johnny Appleseed was only dimly remembered on the great prairies, the countryside did indeed bloom, just as Johnny had seen it would. In the spring, the trees were covered with fragrant pink and white blossoms that the young maidens picked and wore in their hair. In the autumn, they were loaded down with red, green, and yellow fruit, and boys and girls picked the apples to eat as they passed on their way to school. The fathers gathered them and stored them in their cellars. The mothers made them into apple pie and apple sauce and apple jelly and apple everything else. And the whole year round, little children played in the grateful shade of those spreading branches. All, 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 because shabby old Johnny Appleseed, in the richness of his heart, scattered the treasures of the little brown seeds. End of section 80 Recording by Verity Kendall